Hey guys, how's it going? That uh, Forerunner I bought uh, probably about a month ago, three weeks ago, something like that, is uh, getting its turn in the garage. I got caught up on some other stuff, so it's uh, time to uh, bring it in and uh, giving it some uh, a little bit of love that it needs, and uh, most is just maintenance stuff. The uh, rear shocks when I looked underneath were blown out, so I picked up a set of those. Uh, Maintenance-wise, it should have the timing belt uh, slash water pump replaced. This is a kit, contains all of it. Uh, that I'm probably going to wait on. I'm not going to do that right now because that's a fairly large job in itself. And the last thing is, this is a, uh, a lift kit for the front. They kind of make these things angle downward, I guess for stance or looks or whatever. But the problem with that is, I grab a creeper. The um, uh, the wife took it into the trails, and it hangs pretty low. So I want to rectify that situation so that she's not smacking it off all the rocks going down the trail and uh, beating the front end of this thing up. So having said that, I'm going to uh, start ripping the wheels off of this thing and getting into it and doing some repairs on it. That goes on the top of that shock strut right there. So that whole assembly has to come out of there and uh, gets bolted to the top of it and then it just kind of pushes everything down. And hopefully everything else will stay okay. I don't think I have to modify anything else, but uh, we'll see. That and tires, I gotta take the tires off the other truck, put them on these rims, balance them, and put them on this car. All right, so I went ahead and uh, put the rear shocks in and uh, cut the rear rotors and put some pads in them because the pads on the driver's side were pretty uh, down to nothing. So I uh, took care of that while I was in there. and. Uh, Figured that's pretty straightforward, so I didn't bother showing any of that. But we are going to start moving forward with uh, putting the shims in the front to uh, lift that front end up. And if I could take you along with me, we'll go do that. And it starts out with uh, the instructions of uh, read instructions disconnect the battery cable. Yeah, we're not doing that. Place the vehicle on a clean level surface, set the parking brake and place chocks under the rear wheels. Yeah, we're not doing that. Uh, lift it up by the frame. Never get under it without a jack stands under it. Okay. Disconnect the ABS brake lines and brake lines from the upper A arm and spindle. And we'll make a 10 and a 12. Disconnect the sway bar on both both on both side at spindle. Both sides, I guess so. Uh, remove the upper uh, strut nuts, remove the upper ball joint nut, and uh, separate the ball joint by smacking it with a hammer. So what we're gonna do is, the idea is to get this thing up under here. So that's what's gonna give us the lift of it. And uh, what they're telling us to do is disconnect our ABS line, which is this guy. So it'll be that bracket and that bracket. That'll get our brake line out of the way and the ABS line out of the way. This is the ball joint they want you to break, the upper one. So we'll pull the pin, take the nut off of it, and see if we can get that to pop by smacking it with a hammer. And then we should be able to take those three out on the top and the big one on the bottom. We should be able to wiggle that thing out of there. Hopefully, we'll see. All right, stay tuned. All right, so I uh, took off the upper bracket for the um, ABS sensor and the one that's on the spindle for the uh, brake line and the ABS spindle, uh, ABS line. The idea now is we want to try to get this arm so it'll pop free and so it'll lay down out of the way so this strut will have some place to go and uh, this A arm can go up. So we're going to smack it right here. The nut's already loose. want these little BF BFH and we'll try to aim for there but I'm, you know I'm gonna hit that. There she goes. Alright, so let's pop now.
Now the upper arm is really just kind of floating for the most part. All the spring pressure is on the lower one and the lower one. Let's see how far that'll move. It might be already at the end of its stroke. Now the next step is going to be to uh, get these three 14 millimeter ones off the top. Hope you can see those, and that should allow me to, to pull the strut down, push the strut down, and be able to get it out of this enclosure, get out of that enclosure, and get it to walk towards me so I can put the uh, new piece on top. All right, so I ended up getting the three nuts off the top of up here, and. Uh, I must say that was no easy task. They were uh, very tight uh, and rusty. I do believe they were Loctite too. And then I did end up taking out the lower uh, bolt from the strut, so the strut's free on the bottom. And uh, I also took off uh, two more uh, brackets. There was one behind here. The both lines were getting kind of taut. I, I should tie the assembly up, but uh, gave us some more room. And then same thing with the brake line. There was another bracket. <laughs> right here on the frame rail. I took that one off, that gave me more room. So I got the whole thing free and then it was supposed to go and drop out and of course it didn't want to drop out. So what I uh, found was it was it was pretty much rusted in the socket right here. This is the strut, this is the, the part of the frame. So I cleaned that up best I could and I ended up putting pressure on the top of the uh, uh, shock stud with a uh, porta power and uh, was able to get that in there just put some down pressure on it and even with that it wasn't good enough so I took an air hammer and I, I wailed on it with an air hammer right here and then it, it finally popped down. Unfortunately uh, th I think they're saying that you're supposed to be able to pop that strut assembly out of there but I can't see that happening with the torsion bar. You know you can kind of move it somewhat the other side is disconnected but I still don't see enough room where I can kind of get it around that so I may have to take the torsion bar right out to get the strut assembly out so I'm gonna go wrestle with that right now. Anyway, right, well, I finally got the thing out of the hole. It was a little uh, put up somewhat of a fight. I ended up dropping the uh, sway bar altogether just because uh, I needed to get that out of my way and of course you drop the sway bar you gotta drop the pan and uh, I haven't done that yet and whoever had put it up the last time of course stripped out one of the uh, the bolts going up so it was in a hole about an inch and a half deep so I had to hit it with a uh, the impact hammer to fatten the head out and then smash a socket over it and I was able to finally get it out. I'll put a new one in for that. But finally I got the assembly out and that's the whole strut and this is what's going to be doing the lift on it. Is this, um, I guess neoprene is what it's made out of. So that's going to go over these three bolts right here and what they do is they run an extender and you bolt that down and then now this is, will be your new uh, bolt down location for um, uh, the, the top of the frame of the stud. So I'm going to go get that together and get right back to you. Okay, so I got um, the three spacers or uh, standoffs I guess we're going to go call them on the original studs and got them cranked down. I did clean up the threads on them because they were pretty tight with uh, Loctite and then uh, tapped on the rubber bushing and the next is to see if I can get that whole structure back up inside the uh, car because now it's two inches taller. Alright so I was able to actually get that uh, strut in there not too bad. Um, basically fed it up and in and was able to start these two and of course it's leaning on an angle so the back one's not poking through the hole yet. And then on the, the bottom uh, a arm. I ended up putting a long bar in between it. There it is, right there, and was able to swing the uh, whole assembly down further to get the bottom of it in. That's where it's tight, right there. It's getting that back into the socket because uh, now again it's two inches down further than it was before. So, uh, basically, uh, sitting on the bar, and then I took a, a big piece of a screwdriver and uh, popped it. Got it and, and just popped it into the socket. And once it was in the socket, 
um, it was okay with jumping on the bar again and got the bolt started and about halfway in and I just stuck an impact gun to it and it just drew it drew itself the rest of the way in so I put the uh, nut back on the top it's not tightened yet as you can see and it's, essentially I'm just gonna reassemble this side uh, minus the uh, sway bar and uh, get started on the other side so uh, now that I know the process Shouldn't be as bad, but this side did fight me. Uh, I'm probably in it for about two hours so far and uh, most of that's just because of rust. It just didn't want to come apart, so. Hey right, guys, the other side is pretty much back together and I'm going to put the missing parts that were on this side uh, in that I didn't record. Right now what I have is the three nuts loose on the top of the shock tower, but the strut is rusted to the uh, tower itself. So what uh, I plan on doing is I got this little port of power jaw up in there I'm gonna put pressure on it that push down on it and then I'm gonna hit it with an air hammer right around here and basically all I'm using is a, a regular chisel cut off so there's a blunt uh, blunt end on it and because uh, I don't want to damage it I just want to uh, uh, open up that socket a little bit shake that rust out so we go pump up the port of power Pretty good pressure on there. Let's go. There it goes. All right, so now that just dropped out for me. So now it's basically just a repeat of the other side. Uh, I gotta take a pry bar, yeah, unhook you, I need to unzoom you, and unhook you. So now basically the whole assembly is sitting in there free. I got a, a bungee kind of holding up the uh, arms so it doesn't fall out. But I'm going to stick a bar underneath the lower A-frame, push down on it, and pop this out of the socket. And then again repeat uh, what I did the hardware on top. Alright, so this side's all back together too. And uh, put the skid plate back down, back up on it. And uh, it's pretty much ready to let down on the ground. And we'll uh, see what we got for height, well, safety. And let's control by a pump here. There's a little dump handle on it. So let's go let her down. Now they recommend a um, a one and a half inch lift for the rear, but I wanted to wait and see what it looked like first. I don't know, that's pretty level. I'd say that's pretty, that's level. It's gonna settle a little bit when I go to roll it back and forth. Let's see if we can go do that now. We'll back it up a couple feet. So, I pretty much expect to, um, when you buy a used car, put about a thousand bucks into it to get it where it needs to be because nobody really puts the money into it when they know they're going to go sell it and I pretty much expected that. Alright. Now let's see what we got. Yeah, pretty good. It's kind of hard for me to get both of them in the same shot. But uh, yeah, I call that level, definitely. Let's see what we got for space underneath. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good now. I know it's dark. Hold on. I'll fix the situation if I have my flashlight with me. Of course not. There we go. Wasn't a bad job. Uh, two hours on one side, say an hour on the other side. That's much better. We got a. A good foot of clearance, I'd say. 11 inches, something like that. So that shouldn't be any issue anymore. I could tell even by from when my lift, the space of my lift there, and the blocks in the frame. Well, I didn't get everything done I wanted to, but um, that worked out quite well. And uh, anyway, it's going to go do it. As long as it's not rusty, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, the rust was the biggest thing fighting me. 
and uh, parts just not wanting to let go. Other than that, I'd probably say two hours or 45 minutes a piece, something like that, to do it. I got tires from the other uh, trailer to put on it, but I put the uh, bad ones on the on the uh, back for now, and uh, we'll run that, but uh, I'll rectify that shortly. All right, guys, again, thanks for watching, comment, subscribing, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Take care. I said it was the end of it, but uh, I took it for a ride and everything seems fine. It rides down the road nice and uh, it's got the, the lift that it should. I don't think I want to add the rear. I think it's uh, just about right the way it is. Uh, you can feel, you can definitely feel the nose sits up higher when you're driving it and uh, getting in and out of it's a little bit higher. But one little thing I wanted to show, a little bonus footage. And uh, you get a kick out of it. You look down there. What do you see? I tell you I hate mice? Yeah, that and he'll pack the intake manifold with uh, grass. That's fresh. So I'm gonna go dig that out of there, blow it out with an air gun, and uh, we'll be good to go. And uh, thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye. Really? And there. And there. And more over there. That thing was packed. He's going to be pissed when he goes home, ain't he?